Hello, for our friends and family. I would like to welcome everybody to our weekly webinar. And the title of the webinar is The Two-Minute Story for the Network Marketing. Cre create the big picture story that sticks. The book is written by MLM legend Tom Beagle Schreiter and his son, Keith Schreiter. My name is Alex Tunitsky, and I am an organizer, I'm the organizer of this webinar. And I would like to ask Continue to read this wonderful book, my friend and partner from Brooklyn, Zoya Sergei. Zoya, please continue to read from this page. We started, we stopped last time here, and then we will continue forward. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much. I've got a good story. Takes two minutes. Might make you a lot of money, might not. Want to hear it? Would it be okay if you never had to go to work again? So how much money would you need a month just to cover the basic bills so that you would never have to show up at work? A lot of happens in these first sentences and our prospects want more. Why? Because the story is all about them. And now the real magic begins. Onward to our next sentences. The secret question our prospects don't know how to ask. When presenting our business to prospects, what is their biggest question or concern about our products or services? Here are some possibilities. Number one. How good is the quality of the products or services? Two, what are the test results of the products or services? Three, how much do the products or services cost? Four, how fast is delivery? Five, is there a guarantee? These are great questions. But our prospects have a bigger question they need to have answered. They never ask this question, but if we don't answer this question, they will hesitate to join. What is the big secret question our prospects don't know how to ask? If I get involved with your business, will anyone buy these products or services? Sure, our products and services may be great, but will people buy them? Or do we have great products and services that no one buys? If we represent the world's greatest product, but no one buys it, how will our business look? It will look broke. Then our prospects' friends will ridicule them for making a bad decision. How do we assure our prospects that our products and services are in demand? One way to address this is to tell prospects about our successful retailing experiences. We could mention the times when prospects approach us instead of us approaching them. That is what our products want to know. We could say, I take my can of diet powder to work with me every day. I enjoy the low calorie mini meal instead of the donut during coffee break. Last week, three co-workers came over to my desk and asked about the diet powder and I sold six cans. That wasn't hard and our prospect's question is answered. Here are a few other examples. After I helped my neighbor save money on his electric bill, three more neighbors asked me if I could do the same for them. When I got back, from my discounted cruise, 
many of my co-workers asked me to get them discounted cruises also. After using the wrinkle reducer for 30 days, my skeptical sister said she wanted it too. And then she told three of her friends about it. They ordered immediately. The package delivery driver said he loved how my house smelled. When I told him I'm using all natural cleaners now, he wanted to order some for his house too. When I shared that now I sleep great at night, everyone at the club wanted to know what I was taking. Spend time answering the right question. Quality, delivery, guarantee, ingredients. These are the things our pro prospects might have questions about. But as professionals, we have to be responsible and answer the secret question in their minds. We have to let our prospects know that there is a willing market of prospects who will buy our products and services. There is another way to answer our prospect's secret question. We will use the second way of answering this question for our two-minute story presentation. How else can we assure the prospect there is a willing market for our products and services? By commanding our prospects to believe it. Yes, we will use a special phrase that makes it easy for our prospect to believe our message. Here is the magic phrase. Well, you know how? When we say this phrase, well, you know how, our prospect immediately thinks, well, if I already know how, then it must be true. Why? Because what I know is true. No further proof needed. No testimonials. No research reports. No do documentation. Yes, we actually command our prospect to believe what we are going to say next. Starting with this phrase makes it easy for us to get our prospect's agreement. This saves time for both of us. After we say the phrase, well, you know how, we will simply tell our prospects that our products are in demand. Now they don't have to worry. How does this sound in real life? Here are a few ideas. Well, you know how people are always taking vitamins? Our prospects nod in agreement. They now believe there is a market for vitamins. Well, you know how everyone gets an electricity bill? Our prospects feel that there would be a large market for our electricity services. Well, you know how people hate wrinkles? Now we've established that there is a market for our anti-wrinkle creams. Well, you know... How travel is so expensive? This means there is a huge market for discounted travel because of course people want to save money. Well, you know how people buy a lot of energy drinks? Our prospects will think, wow, people do buy a lot of energy drinks. If your business sells energy drinks, there's a huge market for them. Well, you know how people are always dieting and trying to lose a few pounds? This means there's a huge market for our diet products. Commanding is a shortcut. We command our prospects to believe there is a market by starting with the words. Well, you know how? This saves everyone's time. They understand there is a market for our products. We can move forward and keep the short story and interesting.
the, to keep the story short and interesting. Now we can move to the next sentence of our two minute story presentation. Zoya, thank you very much for your reading. Please take a break. And I would like to ask continue to read this book. My friend and partner from Brooklyn, supervisor Isaac Gilbinoich. Isaac, please go ahead. Good evening, everybody. Let's get to the point. Prospects don't want to hear about our company. Well, at least not now. Later, if they decide to join, they will want to know more company details. But for now, they just want us to get to the point of our story. We need to make this short. We can't draw on endlessly about the company founders, the history of the company, parents and trademarks, uh, patents and trademarks, awards won, etc. This isn't a question in the minds of our prospects right now. What do our prospects want to know? Not much. Our prospects already know that there is a demand for our products and services. There is no need to sell them on a company at this moment. So we will make this section short and maybe make a tiny sales plug. How would that sound like this? Well, there is a company called The Wonderful Company, and they have lots of customers who rave about their products. Now, this is a very generic. Why? Because this part of our two-minute story will be different from everyone, depending on their companies. So let's so let's give examples of how this would sound when combined with the previous sentence we learned in the last chapter. Well, you know, people are always talk, taking vitamins. There is a company called The Wonderful Company that produces vitamins that you can feel make a difference. Well, you know how everyone gets an electricity bill. There is a company called The Wonderful Company that helps people get a lower bill. Well, you know how people have wrinkles. There is a company called The Wonderful Company. Hold on, Isaac, for a second. Sorry for interruption. I would like to emphasize that this yellow color I put is related to Forever Living products, right? I just want you to know that. It's not related. We don't sell electricity. But na natural remedies, vitamins, or wrinkles, we could help people with that. Thank you, Isaac. Go ahead. that makes an anti-wrinkle cream that women rave about. Well, you know how travel is so expensive. There is a company called The Wonderful Company that will allow you to be a part-time travel agent. Then you can travel a wholesale prices. Well, you know how people buy a lot of energy drinks. There is a company called The Wonderful Company that makes an all-natural energy drink that tastes even better than those unhealthy ones. Well, you know how people are always dieting and trying to lose a few pounds. There is a company called Wonderful Company that helps people lose weight naturally just by drinking their special breakfast shake. Is that it? Yeah. Hold on for it. a second, please. Sorry for interruption again. I put it in a different color because we have clean nine number one reason number two today is my second day on clean nine and guess what i survived no <laughs> yes go ahead isaac is Please. that it yes that's it the company's credibility and stability might come up later but it's not as issue it's not an issue now right now our prospects only want to hear the end of the story let's review our two-minute story invitation was short. It only took a few seconds. Here it is again. I've got a good story. Takes about two minutes. Might make you a lot of money, might not. Want to hear it? This didn't take long, and it's a very effective. But what about our two-minute story presentation? Now we're four sentences into our actual two-minute story. What have we done with our four sentences? We got our prospects to dream, number one. Number two, 
our classmates told us how much money they need so they would not have to show up for work again. Number three, we explained to our prospects that wonderful products and services that we represent. Number four, now our prospects are thinking, yep, they are probably a pretty good company with some pretty good products and services. So let's see how these four sentences would look like in real life. Here is an example. The story. Would it be okay if you never had to go to work again? So how much money would you need a month just to cover the basic bills so that you would never have to show up at work? Well, you know how everyone gets in electricity bill. There is a company called The Wonderful Company that helps people get a lower bill. That was quick and easy. All four sentences did the job. Let's do a few more examples. Would it be okay if you never had to go to work again? So how much money would you need a month just to cover the basic bills so that you would never have to show up at work? Well, you know how people are always dieting and trying to lose a few pounds. There is a company called The Wonderful Company that helps people lose weight naturally just by drinking their special breakfast shake. Would it be okay if you never had to go to work again? So how much money would you need a month just to cover the basic bills so that you would never have to show up at work. Well, you know how people are so constant concerned. I'm sorry. Well, you know how people are so concerned about the environment nowadays. There is a company called the Wonderful Company that makes all natural cleaning products that people can now use in their homes. Would it be okay if you never had to go to work again? So how much money would you need a month just to cover the basic bills so that you would never have to show up at work? Well, you know how a woman spent a fortune to delay their wrinkles. There is a company called The Wonderful Company that developed a wrinkle reducer that works in just 60 seconds. Would it be okay if you never had to go to work again? So how much money would you need a month just to cover the basic bills so that you would never have to show up at work? Well, you know how everyone gets a telephone wireless bill every month. There is a company called The Wonderful Company that teaches people how to cut their wireless bills by 25, 50% or even get their service free. Okay, that was fast. We're four sentences into, into our story. How long did it take? About 25 seconds. We're moving fast and things are about to get serious and interesting. The first four sentences of our two minute story are the basics. The real magic, the exciting parts starts with the next sentence. The next four sentences are complicated and do the heavy work. Let's begin. Isaac, thank you very much for your reading. Please take a break. And I would like to ask continue to read. Friend and partner, the most reliable manager from New Jersey, Iris Cristobal. Iris, please go ahead. Thank you, Alex. Can you hear me? Yes, everything is perfect. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Isaac, as well. The second half of our two-minute story begins. Now, we have to deliver. Our prospects told us how much money they need every month so they would never have to go to work again. We have to show our prospects a plan to achieve that. The second half of our two-minute story will do that. Our prospects' interest in our story is high. The next sentence. This sentence is long and complicated. Plus, we will customize this sentence to our business opportunity. To make things simpler, in this book, we will use one company example for now. We will imagine that we sold diet products for the next four sentences. Here it is was, It was a special request from me for Big Al to talk about diet products. Oh, uh, that's nice. <laughs> Here is an example sentence. And then we will break down what is really happening. Remember, this example sentence is for diet products only. 
Now, if you want, wanted to never to go to work again, all you would have to do is eventually locate 125 people who wanted to lose weight one time and keep it off forever by changing what they have for breakfast. What? A lot of happened here. Let's break it down. First, we start with the word now. Why? We need our prospects' attention. Our prospects' minds are still thinking about our previous sentences. We have to stop those thoughts. What do we want our prospects to be thinking about? We want them to remind them of the purpose of our story. We want them to mentally experience the feeling of never having to go to work again. By saying the word now, it shocks them. shocks them into stopping their current thoughts and paying attention to our next words. Then what are our next words? If you wanted to never to go to work again. At this point, we have the total attention of our prospects. Our prospects are thinking about the experience of never to going to work again. They want to know how this could happen. Our prospects are on the edge of their seat. Next, we use the words, all, would you, all you would have to do is. What would this mean to our prospects? These words trigger a feeling of feeling inside of our prospects' minds. They think this sounds like it's going to be easy, or at least simple to understand. Our prospects feel positive about our next words. This moves the story along quickly in their minds. They love that we are getting to the point. How do we explain our business? If we talk to 100 network marketing distributors, 95 of them could not explain the details of how their company's compensation plan works. Well, if distributors don't know, how could we expect our prospects to understand in 15 or 20 seconds? Impossible. Plus, our prospects don't want to know the compensation plan now. The compensation plan is only interesting after they make a decision to join. Let's be kind to our prospects and talk to them about what they want to know. After all, this is their story, isn't it? What do our prospects want to know about our business? At this point, in their decision-making process, not much. They want the big picture. Generally, their thoughts are, what would I have to do? Do I have to get my PhD in nutrition? Will I have to spend millions in advertising? Will I have to rent office space and be liable for leases? How many employees will I need? Do I have to knock on my neighbor's doors and beg for sales? Do have to go back to school? We can eliminate this thinking with a simple explanation. We will tell them exactly what they would have to do to earn enough money to never have to go to work again. They should bring a sigh of, re sign of, re sigh of re relief to our prospects. All the details about the company background, the research, the patents, the longevity, etc. can be saved for later. If our prospects are not interested, there's no need for them to know this information. If they are interested and want to join, they will ask for this information. But that happens after our two-minute story presentation. The tricky part is learning how to simplify our business in terms that our prospects understand. They want this explanation in seconds. Do our prospects understand network marketing? Do they understand levels, sponsoring leg, and matching? Bonuses? No, we cannot use these words and we cannot talk about these things now. This is not how ordinary prospects see the world. Yes, there will be exceptions. But even with the exceptions, they want the most of the data much later, after they make the decision to join. 
How do ordinary I'm sorry for interruption, Iris, please, because I think it's really valuable to make my comments right now. They understand levels sponsoring like right here, deception. Do they understand levels sponsoring legs and merchant bonuses, case credits? No. 120 CC in two months to be a manager, two CC in one month to accomplish level of assistant supervisor, 70 five case credits to be assistant supervisor? No, not at all. So do not pollute your conversation with your prospect and use these units of measurements or case credits. I always do like that. When you sign up for free, no risk or any obligation, you will have discount from 5% to 30% of suggestion retail price very slowly from 5% to 30%. Then I take a pause and expect if they will ask anything, we will not cover if there is no question, no problem. If there are questions, I will answer them. But my general idea to mention 5% to 30% and then I added, then we will talk later about these details. Now let's move on. Let me share with you and I proceed with other details, but be patient and do not share with them levels. Manager, senior manager, diamond manager, diamond sapphire manager. It will be totally confusion. Thank you and sorry, Iris, please go ahead. No, thank you for that. That's a great tip. How do ordinary prospects see the business? In the simplest terms, our prospects see business in terms of customers. In their minds, they have a vision of a business owner at a checkout counter in a small store. Our prospects understand customers buying or using products and services. If more customers come into our store, we can earn more money. If fewer customers come into our store, we earn less money. So let's talk to our prospects in terms that they understand. We will talk about customers. And we will combine the usage of distributors and customers in our simplified totals. Don't panic. There's another way. But we will cover that later. For now, we will forget about the features and benefits of our compensation plan and the history of our company. We will talk about the happy customers of our products and services. And now comes the mathematics. Remember, the second sentence of our two-minute story, we ask our prospects how much money they would need so that they would never have to show up for work again. In our example, our prospects told us $5,000 a month. Naturally, our prospects would like to know what they will have to do to earn that money. We will give them big picture overview and make it simple for them to understand. If our explanation is too complicated and difficult, our prospects will go into research and contemplation mode. Then they might never come back to us again. Simple? That is the most important word for us to remember right now. Simple. In our diet products example, <clears throat> excuse me, how many users, customers, and distributors would we need to earn $5,000 a month? That is all the mathematics that we need to know. Now, you might be thinking, well, that depends. Are the all customers my personal customers? What if 25% of those customers are on level 3? <clears throat> Excuse me. It would be depend on my current rack at that time. Yes, we could create hundreds of scenarios and organization structures and come up with hundreds of different answers. This is not the time for that. This is the time to be simple. We'll make rough average estimation. Yes, we can manipulate the data to make the number of customers go up or down. However, that is not what our prospects want to know now. They want to know, generally, what do I have to do? 
So to make it simple for our prospects, we will give them one scenario. Later, we can discuss how to manipulate the number of customers needed up or down, depending on organizational structures, etc. Here is what we tell our prospects. Now, if you wanted to never to go to work again, all you would have to do is eventually locate 125 people who wanted to lose weight one time and keep it off forever by changing what they have for breakfast. How did we get to 125 people? We used some simple mathematics. We estimated that the average retail and bonus profit for a retail customer was $40. If we wanted to earn $5,000 a month, we would need 125 customers. We could have figured the profit customers at $1, $10, or even $100. This depends on our products and services and how we want to customize our presentation. But for the purposes of this initial example, we use $40 for a diet products customer. This is simple for prospects to understand. If they want $5,000, they have to accumulate 125 people who want to lose weight one time and keep it off forever by changing what they eat for breakfast. Later, they decide to join our business, we can discuss other scenarios. But forget what we think at the moment. What is important is what our prospects think. Our prospects are gasping for oxygen. When our prospects hear they have to find 125 customers, they panic. They think, I don't know 125 people. Oh, this is way too hard. I'm not a salesman. Who would I talk to? This is impossible. Relax. This is what anyone would think. We will handle their negative feelings in their next sentence. And don't worry. It is okay for our prospects to have this moment of fear. Back to our prospects. Let's look inside the minds of our prospects and see what they are thinking. Perhaps they are thinking, I feel excited about never to going to work again. You said it was going to be simple. Well, maybe simple for you, but impossible for me. While I would love to never to go to work again, I can't envision myself getting 125 customers. I feel depression taking over again. I was hoping to leave my job. Well, we did explain exactly what our prospects had to do. Our explanation was clear. We will help our prospects recover in the next sentence of our story. But for now, Let's apply this simplicity some, to some other examples. More examples of what prospects would have to do. We will customize this one sentence. We will customize this one sentence example to include our products and services. Remember, our prospects think in terms of customers buying stuff. It is too early for them to understand our compensation plan. Also, remember that we will generally describe what they would have to do. Our prospects want the overview now. Details will come later if they want to join. Here are some examples. All you would you have to do is to get 10 ladies a month to change their skincare program to our premium brand that fights the wrinkles they hate. And then, after just one year, you would earn an extra $5,000 a month. Artists, thank you very much. Let's stop right here because we consume and hopefully they will digest this valuable information. Thank you for your reading. And I would like to ask everybody if you would like to share your thoughts, what we already read in this portion of the book today and the previous day. Any volunteers? Yes, Alex. <laughs> Please go. I'm already like on the mic. Um, I took some screenshots trying to remember 
the the four sentences and the examples that he gave. So keep my mind to memorize so that uh, it will come like naturally when I'm talking to somebody. So if there are good like sentence starters or like um like just a conversation with somebody to have. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Iris. Anybody else? Okay, I have Zoya, please go ahead. I think it's a, it's a very good idea to have uh, these uh, phrases uh, to learn it by heart. Then it's easy to change uh, like any situation. They they will suit any situation. For example, if you wanna if you want to talk about the cream, anti wrinkle cream, it it suits. If you want to talk about the products for dieting, okay drinks okay so it's easy for a person for us it's easy because uh just you put some some uh, like you change you don't change a lot it means it's good you don't think you don't think that oh i, I need to use this or that and then doubt it's like um it's a very nice example for any situation i think absolutely thank you Zoya. Isaac, go ahead. Uh, one, just quickly. Uh, and yeah. we need to try to stay within the story format, not the presentation format. Because that's what it is, two minutes story. Absolutely correct. That's why it starts. Would it be okay if I share with you two minute stories? Make make you a lot of money, may not. Story, two minute story, it's not a presentation. It's a conversation with the person two minute story thank you isaac very valuable from zoya from iris and from isaac anybody else okay now i have two surprises for everybody and i would like to read let me change the screen there is a new share on the screen it says Ludmila Simenchik, would you please confirm what do you see on the screen? Unmute your microphone, Ludmila. Did you hear me right now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So there is an article on a front of your, on your computer or phone, whatever you're using. And I would like to ask Ludmila, who sent me this article, and made the translation from Russian to English is super, super valuable. Ludmila, please go ahead. Okay. Internet. University of California scientists research turns the theory up, upside down about the impact of the internet on human health. If early it was delivered that the network destroy health, now the doses of internet prescribed to all the American patients as a panacea of the early aging and stroke prevention, as well as dementia. Researchers told California conducted an interesting experiment with volunteers aged 55 to 78 years old. They were asking to activity work online for a month. All this time, the doctors were watching volunteers and took reading of electroencephalograms. It turned out that the net stimulates the brain better than books. At work on the internet, the activity of the brain is solution of several different tasks. Part of the brain responsible for memory, reading, speech, imagination and vision become more active. All of all, all this is activity help to slow down and prevent age-related change that often lead the dementia and memory loss. It is also, also supra, su, super, surprising then this activity of the brain continue even after the end of the work on the web. At one of the study authors, 
gerontologist Robert Blunt said, now American doctors are prescribed to their elder patients one hour internet per day as a remedy of rejuvenation and prevention of health disease and sclerosis. It's very interesting information that I know that some people who can use internet and who is around 90 years old and willing to do it, just continue to think a lot like a young person and more active in life in general. I know this person. And this information is true. Thank you very much for your information. Thank you very much for your reading. Okay, so number one, so you understand, no doubt, that when you spend time with computer on internet, you improve your brain activity and you feel better and younger. No doubts in my mind. But be decent. Do not spend hours and hours. Okay, that's number one. Number two, hold on for a second, please. Regarding your age, let me share the screen. And I would like to ask Zoe Sergei to read this article. She made a translation and I would like her to read it for us. It will be one more super valuable information for everybody. Zoe, please go ahead. Okay. Your age, New England Journal of Medicine. Really curious. The world's population is about 7.8 million bi um, billion people. For most people, that's a big number. That's all. However, if you count the 7.8 billion people in the world as 100% human, then 26% live less than 14 years. 66% died between the ages of 15 and 64. 8% of people are over 65. If you have a place to live, eat wholesome food and drink, clean water, have a cell phone, can surf the internet, and are a college graduate, you're in a tiny privileged group in the category less than 7%. So all of us, I'm sorry for interruption, all of <laughs> us, all of us in 7% of population, I want you to be absolutely happy about this priceless news all of us seven percent of population of the globe please go ahead zoe out of 100 percent of people in the world only eight percent can live to 65 years if you are over 65 be content and grateful take care of life seize the moment you didn't leave this world until you are 65, like 92 of the people who left before you. You are already a blessed person. Take care of your health. Treasure every remaining moment. Uh, a large year study found that the most productive age of a person is between 60 and 70 years old. The second most productive stage of a person is the age from 70 to 80 years. Third most productive stage 50 and 60 years. Prior to this, the person has not yet reached his peak. The average age of Nobel Prize winners is 62. The average age of the presidents of the 100 largest companies in the world is 63. The average age of pastors in the 100 largest churches in the US is 71. The average age of dads is 76 years old. 
This confirms that a person's best and most productive years are between the ages of 60 and 80. This study was published by a team of physicians and psychologists in the New England Journal of Medicine. They found that the, at the age of 60, you reach your emotional and mental peak. And this continues until age 80. Therefore, if you're 60, 70, or, years, or 80 years old, you are at the best level of your life. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations to many of us. Congratulations to many of you. Don't be upset that you are not a president. Don't be upset that you are not a pope. Don't be upset that you are not a Nobel Prize winner yet. Be happy what we have right now and be happy again and be happy again. And if you are not in the age of 60, 70 or 80s yet, don't be in a rush. You will be there. Slow down, take your time, enjoy. Any comments? Thank you, Alex, for this positive articles. <laughs> Yeah, it's so important to be proud of yourself. And even more, then this information gives you like a push that you're on the right path, that you're doing the right thing. Be Absolutely. proud of yourself. Yeah, we're at the peak. Wow. Maybe I feel much better. I have another 15 productive years. <laughs> at least. Don't be, don't be nervous, Isaac. <laughs> I'm not in a rush. I'm just there. To take your time. <laughs> okay. So thank you to all readers, but it's not everything. I have cherry on top of the cake. Just hold on for a second, please. Let me share the screen. It will be very short. Watch it careful, read it, and enjoy. Hold on, please. What do you see on the screen? Anybody? A street or something, a place. Okay, oh, let's do something. After 20 years of marriage, a husband and wife. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You have to read it, everything. It doesn't matter how value of the sound, you must read it. Okay, let's do it. After 20 years of marriage, a husband and wife go to counseling. When asked what the problem is, the wife breaks into a passionate tirade of every problem they've ever had. Finally, after allowing this to go on for a sufficient length of time, the therapist gets up, walks over to the wife, makes her stand up and kisses her very hard. The woman shuts up and quietly sits down. The therapist says to the husband, this is what your wife needs at least three times a week. Can you do this? After a moment, the husband replies, well, I can drop her off here on Mondays and Wednesdays, but on Fridays I fish. <laughs> of all the people that Republicans could have <laughs> I hope you like it would you like me to play it again he got it no, no. Once is enough. after 20 years of... <laughs> oh, you understand what what was all about right yes. he's a busy on Friday yeah <laughs> okay it was about fishing yes <laughs> 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 okay, thank you readers and thank you everybody. I'll see you next Monday. Take care, bye-bye. Thank bye. you everybody. Bye -bye. Good night everyone, bye-bye.